Hello, Timmy Napso here talking to you about platform service fees. Platform service fees, this has become something that historically was an issue to bill. As a lot of us know that have used software in the past, as well as use software providers that created software, at one point in time, you would charge for the software ahead of time, and then you would charge maybe for a block of time to service that customer or client. As an example, if it was a restaurant software, you might charge for 10 hours of time, and every time they call in, you go ahead and service that customer, that restaurant owner. Now, with the power of the cloud, recurring billing, and other features, what we've been able to provide software providers is a dynamic way to accept payments. Now, the amount of dollars that go into putting a software in your business has declined significantly for this revenue recurring model. And the software fees now also, and, and fees to the consumer have become much more popular. For those of us that have worked out at a gym, we understand that to be the case as well. At one point in time, we used to charge, we used to get charged three, three years in advance or five years in advance or one year in advance. Now it's a monthly membership fee. It wasn't that they didn't want to charge monthly, which is very hard to collect on a monthly basis. So the more you could get ahead of time, the better. Because of chargeback reasons and membership with the card brands, that began to become a protection thing for consumers. That, hey, look, we need to protect these consumers so we can't charge too far in advance because what if the business goes under? And during that time, how do you get that money back to the consumer? So these monthly uh, 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 platform service fees have become a very popular option for the industry. We've even seen more recently Ticketmaster, as an example, move on an all-in-one pricing experience. This is very interesting. All-in-one pricing experience. What are the consumers, or even businesses, really striving for? They want to know what they're getting for what they pay. We've seen companies like Tesla, as an example, follow a very similar model where they say you're ordering a car similar to as if you are ordering a meal. You know exactly what you're gonna pay, you see all of your fees, adding features is like a menu option, you check out. That feels a lot better to the consumer than having to negotiate, especially when you have pretty much 90% of the population that has no art of negotiation at all, nor have they ever negotiated anything in their past. So it doesn't feel good to walk away and find out that your friend paid a whole lot less than you did. So this platform service fee concept to try to not only display the truth, what are you actually paying? We see this in hospitality now, a big push towards these resorts, not charging astronomical resort fees, unexpected resort fees. We've even seen it more recently where a lot of folks, due to what has happened with remote scenarios of post-COVID, they're saying, hey, there are these fees that are popping up that we've never seen before, and they're being attributed to COVID and what has happened with COVID. The consumer wants transparency. The consumer is also a business owner in a different part of their life and they want transparency. How do you offer that through your software? It's extremely important to offer this type of transparency. So managing on the correct type of platform is what helps us get there. This is very important part of this. What does a platform need to do? What does your platform need to do? How does it need to partner in order to provide merchants, businesses, and then downstream consumers, the ability to have these service fees be displayed, but also be upfront and transparent with these fees. With that being said, there are a few products that exist that we have really spent time and energy developing, and those products help software companies downstream all the way to the consumers have a better experience. One of those might be Quick invoice, as we like to call it, which is an invoice light that allows you to quickly generate an invoice and send it to the consumer so they fully understand everything that's happening. The vehicle in which you send it allows for a link to pay, which is another feature that has been developed. And we see this throughout the market start to become much more popular that now you could pay via text message. Now you could pay via email. You could pay via social channels. Like the ability to create flexibility to pay is very important. But let me tell you something, people will not pay if they don't know what they're paying. So making sure that invoice is correct, making sure we're displaying from a transparency perspective, everything that's happening is very important. 
People love value meals at their local fast food restaurant for a reason. The a la carte, they don't fully understand what the total amount is gonna be. And that is what we're dealing with from a population perspective as well. Finally, the ability for your software to take that payment and similar to a marketplace experience, say, I'm going to split the payment. I'm gonna split a payment and hold a particular amount, retaining the amount or splitting the payment is another valuable asset in making sure that we can streamline this process of platform fees and consolidation. All of these features, whether it be the retained amount split payment, the quick invoice generator, and the ability to send that off through a link to pay, creates quicker receivable capabilities, creates clarity, and allows a software to do things it didn't do 10 years ago or even five years ago. If you're not doing these things, it's time to really start looking into it. If your software, if folks you're working with don't understand what's capable, it's important to do some research and start leveraging 2023 and beyond.